Hello everyone, this is Amish from digitalbrainbase.com. Now, this is a really exciting video because we are going to be looking at the newest release for OpenWebUI version 0.4.2. Now, how did I know that this new version had gotten released? Well, I'm pretty much following this release. So every time that there is an update, I simply get an email notification. If you want to know how you can set that up, I'm going to share a link to a video which will help you guide or guide you through that process. Now, I also didn't need to update the container by myself manually because I simply had Watchtower set up. So all I did was I ran Watchtower. It checked to see if there was an update for Open Web UI. And because it was, it simply just updated for me. So I'm also going to share a video um, to that in the description so you can take a look and see how you can simply automatically update all of your Docker containers. Now, with that being said, let's just go ahead and take a look at the newest release for Open Web UI. Now, it looks like in this update, there are three releases. One is 0 0.4.2, 0 0.4.1, and then 0 0.4.0. To me, it looks like this was the main update that had come out. And then it looks like there were some fixes here and then some fixes here based on the updates. So let's start by looking at B0.4.0. Um, what are the things that they added and what are the things that they fixed and changed? Looks like it's going to be uh, quite an extensive video. So first there were user groups. So you can now create and manage user groups, making user organization seamless. So let's see what that looks like on the open web UI platform. So let's go back to our home under admin panel. Oh, it looks like now I have groups. So organize your users. So use groups to group your users and assign permissions. That would be interesting. So imagine I create a group, maybe something known as marketing, give it a description like this is for my marketing team. I can create this and then add all of my users here. And then I can really easily control those permissions. I like this release. Group-based access control, yep, that's what we had talked about. Uh, Group-based user permissions, that makes sense. Newly introduced LDAP authentication. So I will be truthful. I'm not sure what LDAP means. So let's see if I can actually pull it up. If I go to my admin panel, maybe under settings, yep, there it is, LDAP. So if I enable this, so it says localhost and then application, there's an application password. So it looks like there is some way in which we can set up some sort of password and certificate. So really enhancing the overall security. I'm gonna need to take a closer look at this, um, but if someone actually knows how to work with this, definitely leave a comment. Let me know what resource I could use before I make the video. That'll save me some time. Enhanced OpenAI compatible connections. So added a prefix ID to, support, to avoid model ID clashes um, with custom setups. Okay, so that's interesting. Let's take a look at what that looks like uh, here under my admin panels. If I go to workspace, models, is that there? Enhanced OpenAI compatible connections. Okay, so it looks like I'm going to have to go to my model or admin settings and then settings and connections. And there it is. So if I wanted to add a new connection, I can simply add my base URL. And then it looks like this is something that they added. So leave empty to include all models from the models endpoint. Interesting. Uh, enhanced the open AI compatible connections. Yep, that's the one that we just looked at. Olama API key support. Okay, so this is more security for um, Olama. Connection enable, disable, toggle. Easily enable or disable individual open AI and uh, Olama connections as needed. I think that would be really interesting. I like this. Um, so for example, sometimes like this can be quite messy because I have so many models that are currently here. But imagine that in my admin panel, if I go to my settings, connections, maybe if I disable all of the OpenAI models, and now if I take a look, yep, it just simply removed all the OpenAI models. 
Uh, I really like that feature. It doesn't really clog up all of my interface there. Uh, redesign the model workspace. So freshly redesigned to improve usability for managing models across users and groups. So model workspace. What does that look like? Um, under workspace, models. Yep. Okay. So this makes sense. Uh, the UI, it looks like it, instead of just being a comp compact view, now it's just large icons. I don't think that there was, I think it's just a UI update. I don't think that they changed anything else. Obviously, when we add the model, we still see everything that we would usually see. So nothing else has changed here. This looks like it's pretty much the same. Uh, what's the next one? Redesign the prompt workspace. So a fresh UI to conveniently organize and manage prompts. Let's take a look at what that looks like. So prompts, this is what my original prompts were. So if I try to click on one, and then I can, I guess I can even change access to public versus private. That's something new that they added in here as well. So looks like they just made some UI changes here. What happens if I share? Oh, so this lets me share it to openwebui.com directly. I think that that feature already existed. Um, sorted functions workspace. So functions are now automatically categorized by type. So auctions, filter, and pipe. Okay, that's really convenient because previously I wasn't sure if something was a function or if something was pipeline. And it was really confusing and I really like this feature because now it makes it so much easier. Um, next, redesign the collaborative workspace. So enhance support for multiple users contributing to models, knowledge prompts, or tools. So I'm guessing that this would be another feature with more users. So once we have more users, we can work together to improve existing models or knowledge bases and prompts and those kind of things. Um, Auto-selected tools in model editor. So tools enabled through the model editor are now automatically selected, whereas previously it only gave the users the option to enable the tool. So if I go to model editor, so models here, and then select tools, Okay, so if I just add them from my tools workspace, they're just pretty much just going to be automatically added in here. Um, web search and tools indicators. So a clear indication now shows when web search or tools are active, reducing confusion. That is interesting. So let's see if we can actually try that out. Let's go to my admin setting. Let me just make sure that web search is enabled. Okay, looks like it is. I'm going to have to change this right after this video. Uh, but let me go in here, web search, and say uh, something like, oh, nice. Okay, so this is the functionality. It says search the web. So this is currently active, versus if I turn it off, and that's gone. Okay, so that's what they added there. The toggle API key auth. So tighten security by easily enabling or disabling API key authentication option. Okay, so more of like a security Update agentic retrieval, improve RAG accuracy by smart pre-processing of chat history um, to determine the best queries before retrieval. Wow. Okay. So there's a lot to unpack there. Chat or smart pre-processing of chat history. So I'm guessing that I don't think it's related to the knowledge base. I'm guessing that's just going to be related to, well, I don't, I'm not sure. Let me take a look at this feature a little bit more in some detail. Uh, I'm going to just dive into that code base a little bit. Large text as file option. So optionally convert a large pasted text into a file upload, keeping the chat interface cleaner. I really like that um, because sometimes you would upload like a large image or something and it would just completely blow out the entire um, chat window. Toggle citations for models. So ability to disable citations has been introduced. In the model editors, I like that feature as well. Um, so if I go to models under recruiter bot, for example, I can simply say, I don't want the model citations to show up. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. It really depends on use case. User settings search. So quickly search for settings fields. I'm not sure about this. So if I had to search for settings, I still, how many layers do I have to go through? I still have to click here and then go to settings. But then I have to go to admin settings. 
so that I can go to the real settings. So it looks like there are two settings here. So one is here. And then to go to the actual settings, I have to click on admin panel and then again, click on settings. So personally, I feel like this could still use just a little bit more work. Experimental speech T5 text to speech. So local um, speech T5 support added for improved text to speech capabilities. Okay, nice. Let's take a look at that one. So I'm guessing under audio, and then this, I am also going to have to delete this API key, but let's see the new one that they added was transformers and then whisper one to learn more about speech T5, click here. And then to add, you see the available CMU Arctic speaker embeddings click here. So this shows us how we can add more speakers if you wanted to. So US male, US female. So there's a bunch of different options, Indian male. Uh, okay, that's great. And then speech T5, that's this model here. How we can also include that. Okay, that's perfect. Um, so if I was to save this, let's see if we have one by default. Um, I'm gonna ask it to tell me a fun fact about the Roman Empire. Of course, because I'm using chat GPT-4, it's taking a while for some reason. Let's read it aloud. Now, because it's running locally, maybe it's taking a while, but I think I might have to enable some more settings here because I don't think that this really is working. Let's see what else we have available. Let's see if this would run in the background while we check to see what else is there. Um, unified reset for models. A one-click option has been introduced to reset and remove all models from the admin settings. Roman oh. concrete, opus caementitium, is so durable that some ancient structures still stand today. Yeah, I don't know about this one. To be honest, I still prefer the opened AI um, API a little bit more than what this is. Uh, I mean, it's good, but it's so grainy and noisy for some reason. Um, open with AI is also just using local inference. It's significantly faster and it's a lot more clear. I'm going to share a link to the video to that in the video card. So you can take a look at that one. I think I made the video like last week or something. So what else was the release? Um, oh yeah. Unified reset for the models. How do I do that? Would that be under models? Oh, there it is, search models. And then if I click reset, this will de delete all models, including the custom models. Yeah, I don't want to do that. So let's not do that. Uh, initial, I thought that this was one for chat. I'm not sure if there's a way I can just delete, simply one click delete all of the chats. I think that would be a really nice feature if we could just simply delete all of the chats at once. Uh, initial setup wizard. So this setup process now explicitly informs users that they're creating an admin account during the first step. So previously they had the login page right away. Okay, that's nice. So at least they have a little bit more context when they're setting up Open Web UI for the first time. Looks like there are a couple of fixes here with DuckDuckGo, rate limit, citation relevance, fix, um, Gina search API key requirement. Uh, I guess that wasn't there before. Um, and then they changed a couple of things. So they moved the functions or moved, functions moved to the admin panel. So we have to go to admin panel for that now. Um, manage Olama connections. The model sections in the admin settings have now been relocated to connections. I'm not sure what I feel about that. Previously under models, you can just simply download a model, but now you would have to go to connections and then click on the spanner. And then you can pull a model from olama.com. You can delete models from here. You can create a model. Okay, is that experimental? Oh, upload a GGUF model. And then let's see what models are available for downloading. Okay, these are just directly through Hugging Face. Interesting. Okay, that makes sense. I might just do a video on that as well. Uh, base model in admin settings. So admin can find all base models, both connections or functions in the models admin setting. So global model accessibility can be enabled or disabled here. Models are private by default. 
Okay, so just some more role-based access control kind of stuff. And then sticky model selection for new chats. Okay, so if you just wanted to... The chosen model from a previous chat now persists when you create a new chat. It will revert back to your default model. Okay, not bad. Design refactoring. So overall design refinement across the platform has been made, providing a more cohesive and polished user experience. Okay, so... These were like the main updates. They added in, I think, one day later, or I guess in the same day. Uh, they also have a feedback system, thumbs up, thumbs down. So they have a 1 to 10 rating now. Interesting. So if I go back here, good response. Oh, okay, so 1 to 10 here. That's interesting. Okay. That's the thing that they added. Well, when I say interesting, I'm, I just mean I wonder why we'd want to use that, but it makes sense for reinforcement learning or something just to improve the overall quality, those kind of things. We would want to have more of a detailed feedback. Um, tool descriptions over hover. So easily access tool descriptions by hovering over the message input. So message input. Oh, I guess I have to enable a tool first. So once I enable the tool, I'm guessing it's, it would show up here somewhere. And then um, if I hover my mouse over it, it's going to give me a description on what that tool is. Interesting. Okay, I might just create a video on that. Um, and then it looks like a day later, there was one more update. And this is about knowledge files visibility. So now that shows up. OpenAI endpoint prefix. So that one was another fix. Arena model access control. Um, so just another bug fix there. Fix up broken users capabilities. So looks like um, it was a pretty major update. Like a lot of things got um, changed here. So I'm going to be redoing some of these videos. I can direct, I can automatically see um, the setup video, for example. The initial startup video would also might, maybe, the, yeah, the, maybe that video might also need to be remade. But a pretty exciting update and a good step in the right direction. Um, I think that the thing I like about op um, op Open Web UI is the fact that they listen quite a bit to the community. Um, and these are all just community requests and features. So um, it's really nice that they are taking this initiative. If you aren't on the Open Web UI Discord, definitely join there. Um, if you have some feature requests, you can also post those on that um, Discord channel. Looks like that's pretty much it for this video. Um, I'm going to remake some of these videos um, that I've released in the past based on the newest update. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.